All right, what's up, perps? I'm back for another episode of Paper Cuts. This is episode 46. Uh, sad thing is, is another year, there's more bills being submitted right now that uh, a lot of them, when I look at them, are basically retreads of a lot of the stuff that I'm still trying to get through. It's, it's just insane. Um, and then we see all the stuff going on with JSD, FRTs, it's... Uh, it's two extremes right now. We're seeing a lot of things happen as far as uh, permitless carry and um, a lot of wins on the state level as far as uh, a lot of gun control issues. And then on the federal level, it's just a avalanche. Um, and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. So let's get to this bill. So this was submitted on 5-18-2021. Um, this is HR 3299. And this is to help reduce gun violence through background checks and the National Firearms Act. And of course, for other purposes. It's other purposes. Okay, so let's uh, run through this real fast and we'll just hit a couple names right here. Um, Val Demings, uh, absolute lunatic, um, knows Jack about firearms. Um, Miss Jackson Lee, uh, absolute mental midget. Um, <laughs> and this one has, I think, actually picked up some sponsors while they're doing other bills that are crazier than this one. Ha ha, have fun with it. I struggle. You know, we were talking on a live stream the other night about how to make these things interesting going through these bills like this, and there's just no way to do it. Not unless I sat here and juggled flaming chainsaws, and I can't juggle. Um, so, let's get into this. Damn, did I just do that creepy Joe Biden whispering thing? I'm running it. Never mind. Maybe I don't sound as creepy as him when I do it. Okay, so to help getting into the bill itself, to help reduce gun violence through background checks, National Firearms Act, and for other purposes, uh, the short title this act may be cited as Protecting Our Communities Act, um, which as we all know, all this gun control is not gonna protect anything. Um, so let's see so getting into this so they're actually getting into firearms assembly kits um, firearms assembly kits are to be considered firearms uh much like what we're dealing with with jsd right now um and another company got hit and i still haven't heard who that company was but you can expect more of this um so let's get into this. Let's get into section 921, which you all know if you followed me long enough, 921 is the definitions, 18 USC. Um, and let's see what kind of handy dandy stuff that they add into USC. And I'll bring this down on this side too. Sometimes it's kind of a pain to keep up with the way this stuff is worded. So in paragraph three by striking or yada yada, so it ends up reading like this in paragraph three. The term firearm means any weapon including a starter gun which will or is designed or may be readily converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive, the frame or receiver of any such weapon, any firearm muffler or firearm silencer, and then they add in this D, any destructive device or E, any combination of parts designed or intended for use in converting any device into a firearm and from which a firearm may be readily assembled. Understand they are going after parts. It's what I've tried to warn people about. They are going after the parts with some of this. <sighs> Let's read that again. Any combination of parts designed or intended for use in converting any device into a firearm and from which a firearm may be readily assembled. And we all know that term readily is a term they define. Okay, so 
do, 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 by adding at the end subparagraph A, striking and at the end, inserting a period by striking through C. So they're getting rid of that. They are getting rid of this entire paragraph because they don't want to have to deal with that. They don't want to have to deal with purposes or anything else. So section three, law enforcement protection. Oh, really? All of a sudden, Democrats are worried about protecting law enforcement. Um, okay, I'll bite. So this is section 5845 of the Internal Revenue Code. And let's pull that up. Where are we at? Da -da -da -da. USC 26. Is this it? All right, under definitions. Um, they get into this an armor piercing concealable weapon. The term armor piercing concealable weapon means any weapon or device capable of being concealed on the person from which can be discharged to the energy of an explosive any of the following ammunition. Understand they're going after pistols at this point. AR pistols, AK pistols, PCCs, all that. So if you have a pistol that fires any one of these, well then that becomes a concealable armor piercing weapon. Um, and understand it just has to pierce soft body armor. And I would really like to see the 50 BMG pistol. Just saying, like to see it. Get into this. Okay, the 450 Bushmaster. Two, five, five, six. Um, to include five, five, six by 45 NATO and two, two, three Remington. Seven, six, two millimeter, including seven, six, two by 39, 308, seven, six, two NATO, seven, six, two by 51 NATO, 30 carbine, seven, six, two by 33, or 300 blackout. 50 BMG. 5.7 by 28. So yeah, your five sevens on there. Um, any other round determined by the Bureau of Tobacco, Alcohol, and Firearms, and I know I said that all backwards, get over it, um, to be capable of, when fired by such weapon or device, penetrating through standard body armor worn by law enforcement officers. Uh, your standard body armor worn by law enforcement officers is soft body armor. Um, it's not plates. Uh, some of them might wear some ceramics. But understand, this is all soft body armor. Um, term armor piercing concealable weapon has the meaning given in such section of 5845 National Firearms Act. Um, okay, so they're getting into 921 here. So... That was the other change in 921. And that is, these people are going hard in the paint over this stuff. And I mean hard. Here it is. So the term armor piercing concealable weapon has been such term given in the National Firearms Act. 50, 4, 5, that's what we just read on the other one. Um, section 922, uh, so we're getting into 922 here. So unlawful acts. So they threw the definition out there, now they have to get into the unlawful acts. Because they still have to follow the way the law is actually laid out. They can ignore the definition of all these things and add their own definitions in, but they have, still have to try to abide by the way the law is actually structured. So let's see, in subsection 4A by striking short barreled rifle, inserting short barreled rifle or armor piercing concealable weapon. Uh, in subsection B4 by striking short barreled rifle, inserting short barreled rifle and armor piercing concealable weapon. So they're, they're just changing these definitions all around and I, I edited that wrong, but I'm not going back and reading through this thing again. Um, to try to get that edit back where it should be because this stuff drives me absolutely insane. Because um, it doesn't stop anything. 
There's nothing in here about, hey, dude, we're going to find this new handy dandy way to disarm criminals. Um, just not there. Okay. And generally, amendments made by the subsection shall take effect on the date of enactment. So as soon as this is enacted, this takes effect. There's no 120 days, yada, yada. It is enacted. Application to possession and date of enactment notwithstanding, subparagraph, running through this, Internal Revenue Code is amended, shall not be later by the 18th month beginning of enactment. So they just kind of contradict themselves all of them. Okay, uh, this act, register such weapon or device with the Secretary of the Treasury and include with such registration the information required under subsection of this code. Such registration shall become part of the National Firearms Act registration and transfer record required to be maintained by such subsection. So any of these weapons are now registered just like machine guns. Um, uh, see how that works out for you. Uh, I do believe the term mass non-compliance is going to come into effect here. Uh, use of National Firearms Act taxes, part one, subsection, chapter 53, Internal Revenue Code 86 is amended, redesignating uh, 5849 as subsection 5850, and by inserting after uh, 5847 the new following section. So they are again creating a whole new subsection of law here. Use of taxes to carry out the purposes of this chapter and supplement the Appropriations Act otherwise made available for such purpose the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives may spend the amounts collected under subsection A for the fiscal year 2021 and thereafter. So all of the taxes you're going to be paying going to the ATF, they can spend that for new agents, new enforcement, uh, more trampling on your rights, uh, shooting more dogs. Um, they might even expand to cats. Just saying, um, they, they could possibly do it. This is the ATF we're talking about here. All right, so back to chapter 44, United States Code. So they get into 925B. And this is getting into what they've talked about before, reporting of denials on background checks, which, again, if you have followed a lot of this channel or you have followed a lot of other people's channels, you know that most of the time when someone is reported as failing a background check, it is due to um, a similar name. Um, it could be due, uh, one guy with the FFL is telling me that it is could be due to uh, certain clearances for military service that take longer to run these background checks so they actually fail the initial background check um, in general uh, if the National Instant Criminal Background Check System established under 103 of the Brady Handgun Act provides notice pursuant to 922T, that's where you fail it. The receipt of a firearm would violate subsections GN 922, those are the unlawful acts. Um, the Attorney General shall in accordance with subsection of this subse subsection B of this subsection of the another subsection of another subsection. Um, report to law enforcement authorities of the state where the person sought to acquire the firearm. Um, if Different the law enforcement authorities of the state the, of the residence of the person. So if you went to buy a long gun across state lines and got jammed up on a background check, well, then they would report it to the law enforcement authorities in your state. And then they come visit you. Um, notice was provided, the specific provision of the law that had been violated, of the date um, and time the notice was provided location where the firearm was sought to be purchased, uh, the identity of the person. Where practical, um, report the incident to local law enforcement authorities, state and local prosecutors in the jurisdiction where the firearm was sought and the jurisdiction where the person resides. 
Now understand, I would be all for this if criminals were going to FFLs and trying to get firearms and they were being denied through background checks and then you had law enforcement go visit this seven time felon because he tried to purchase the firearm through an FFL. That is not what happens 99% of the time with these. Uh, reporting made in accordance with the subsection report made within 24 hours um, after the provision of notice described in subsection A, which is up there, except that making of the report may be delayed for so long as necessary to avoid compromising an ongoing investigation. Hunter Biden. Um, yeah, they'll delay that one forever. Uh... Rule of construction, nothing in subsection A shall be construed to require a report with respect to a person to be made to the same state authorities and originally issued um, the notice with respect to the person. Then they go through a clerical amendment here. We're going to 925B. Did I do 925? 224. Nope. I may not have got to 925 on this one. Um, annual report to Congress. So they're actually going to do an annual report to Congress saying, hey, these are how many background checks have been denied through this. These are how many people have been visited. Um, they may need, need to actually get into how many dogs have been shot. Um, uh, it's up to them what they report. Each category of persons prohibited um, from receiving a firearm, number of cases referred to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, number of cases with respect to the investigation um, was opened by Field Division of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, number of arrests made. This is a number we see that is very, very low when it comes to the number of uh, denials that they report. Uh, extremely low because most of the denials aren't actual denials because someone has a criminal record. Number of background checks notices reported to state authorities pursuant to subsection 925B, including the number of notices that would have been so reported for subsection 925C. Man, these Classification of regulations classifying bump stocks as machine guns. The amendment to parts uh, 447, 448, 449 of Title 27, Code of Federal Regulations, made by the final rule propagated by the Department of Justice, entitled Bump Stock Style Devices, Type Devices, published December 26, 2018, shall have the force and effect of law. So treating something that is not a machine gun, that is not in the definition of a machine gun, just because the ATF says it's a machine gun, well now it's treated as a force of law. You have an illegal machine gun if you have one of these devices. Uh, FRTs, force reset triggers of any type, the WTO, the wide open triggers, uh, or WOTs, those are going to be the same thing. Um, guess what? Don't pass, go. Here's your 10 years in prison. Here's your felony. Here's your life destroyed. Um, good luck fighting it. Hope you got a big fat bank account because you're going to spend probably $500,000 fighting this. Which is why we are talking now about supporting JSD and their fight against this stuff. And the hits just keep on a coming. Anyway, we've seen a lot of this language in a lot of other bills. They just basically pass it around. Um, so that's this one. Uh, sorry, it wasn't the greatest job I've done on one of these. Uh, been busy trying to do a whole lot of other stuff, finishing SDI homework, all that. Um, and then I got the kiddos running around. So, yeah, um, that's this one. This is the... Good Lord, this is the 46th video. Out of these 40-something videos, I think we've probably covered close to 100 different bills um, because I added in a bunch of stuff, a bunch of violence bills, all that stuff kind of together because they came into the same area. Um, 
and it just gets growing after a while. So anyway, perps, that's this video. I'm out for this one. Um, I'm going to shoot a couple more videos today just because, you know, I want to throw a little bit more content out there. I want to do a little bit more fun stuff besides going over crap like this. So y'all be cool, and I am out for right now.